is Tamson Gilbert. I'm I am the person who has been emailing you. Um, I am research network producer at Common Ground Research Networks. Um, what we're going to do today is we'll start off uh, by letting everyone into the meeting. Um, and then what we'll do is we will introduce ourselves. I'll call your name and then perhaps you can just tell us a little bit about you and your interest in the climate change conference. Um, and uh, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen um, and go through the event schedule and sort of highlight uh, your role as an emerging scholar, both uh, in person and online only. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to do the little raise hand or just unmute yourself and say, hey, Tamsin, I have a question. Um, no, no, no reason being shy. Um, and so please ask any questions. Um, and then what we might do, some of you I know uh, are more... Uh, know exactly what's going on. You're expert emerging scholars. Um, but some people are new and I'd like to um, meet and introduce each other. Um, so um, I'm just going to go in order of the rectangles. And my first one is Daniel. Daniel, would you mind introducing yourself? Hi, Daniel. Hi, Hi everyone. Uh, okay, I hope, how, how are you doing well? Um, I'm Daniel. Yeah from Medellin, Colombia. Um, I'm very pleased to, to get to know all of you because my recent interest um, this last year has been focus, focusing in, in climate research. I, I am, I'm working in the, uh, for the government of my state here in Colombia. We call them departments, Departamento of Antioquia the state of Antioquia in Colombia for uh, adaptation to climate change. But, but specifically, I, I'm interested in, in um, ethic, ethical issues. I'm working on ethics and, and, and life ethics. And I want to, to, to help spread the word and to create awareness in, in our institutions, in our societies and our communities about the relationship we have with nature. So we have, so, so we can formulate better uh, politics, better uh, take, make better decisions in, in, in the institutions and in the governments about the strategies the strategies for adaptation to climate change. So, yeah, I'm. I have been some. Sorry, I I have uh, I have research. Uh, I have stalked some of your works, and yeah, I'm very on uh, honored to to be here and to to learn from you all. So, thank you. Thanks, Daniel. Um, my next. Uh... Rectangle square is Olufemi. Olufemi, can you please unmute and introduce yourself to everyone? Oh, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Yes, um, wherever wherever everyone is, all over the world. Yeah, I'm Olufemi Aditunji. I'm uh, a Newton International Fellow at the University of Lincoln in the UK. I'm really happy to be here and. Uh, Happy to meet everyone and to read and learn from all our research. Um, uh, my research cut across uh, conservation of cultural heritage, climate change, and community engagement. And uh, I've been able to collaborate with some organization and professionals all around the world. And currently I'm working with some colleagues from, I don't know if you know, if you know about this, Organization International Council on Monument and Site, ICOMS. I'm working with some colleagues there to organize uh, some training activities and workshops for heritage professionals uh, in the global south, especially in Africa. Uh, happy to be here and looking forward to meet everyone, possibly in person, because I am working towards going to. France in person for the conference 
and I'll be happy to meet everyone either in person or virtually. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, my next uh, rectangle is Benjamin. Benjamin, can you say hello and introduce yourself? Yeah. Hello, everybody. Can you hear uh, me? Yes, we can hear you. Oh, great. My name is Benjamin ADBC. Um, I am a researcher um, and principal investigator. I, I have um, an educational institute where I educate people about their health. And concerning climate change, I have so much interest in the biosphere. That's the sphere in which we occupy as humans. And um, the effect human um, actions or humans activity, including environmental degradation and um, pollution, all this have effect on the human health. And you know, they say health is wealth. And the implication of several human activity, including pollution and degradation, which um, invariably affects the climate, will have so much um, grave effect on human health. And you know, human health drives productivity. And healthy nation is a productive nation. So if we have um, activity affecting our health, invariably we have a sick world and uh, productivity, re uh, productivity reduces. And if you have reduced productivity, that's gonna affect our quality of life, our economy. So we have an interwoven, um, um, connection, you know, we, we have uh, individual responsibility to, to educate the public and um, also encourage the government concerning policies to make, to, to implement measures such that um, human activity, most importantly, um, pollution and environmental degradation is curtailed, you know, and um, the pollution is reduced possibly with working with several technologies to have cleaner energies and cleaner ways of doing things such that our environment is healthy. And if our environment is healthy, is cleaner, apparently that's our mother heart that houses us. We also will be healthy. If we are healthy, we'll be more productive. So that's um, what um, my research is all about. And several diseases all around the world from communicable diseases, from even neurological diseases have a um, connection with environmental factors. So even while we talk about genetic cause of disease, we still have the environment having effect on genetics, such that an expression of disease, even while the genetic disposition is there, still needs environment to express itself. So environmental activity by humans needs to be curtailed. We need to work on you know, maintaining our energy or maintaining our environment, having cleaner energy or working on cleaner energy, um, create strict measures, policy measures against people, um, against companies that pollute the environment, maybe through their waste products and production of um, non-biodegradable materials, and also encourage communities to clean up their environment and live cleaner life, make the environment cleaner, and we have a healthier world. So that's what I do. Thank you very much. Thank you, Benjamin. Um, great to hear about your work. Um, Fatima, Fatima, can you unmute and introduce yourself? Hi, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes. I'm just Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. This is, I think, a more than part time for me to attend this uh, uh, conference as an emerging scholar. So I am Fatima Jahan Sharna from Bangladesh, and currently I am working as an additional district and station judge in Bangladesh. And I am going to present my paper on climate change adaptation policy for women in indigenous communities in Bangladesh, a critical assessment of law and policy pertaining human and environmental rights. I'm very much keen to meet new people and to know that what's going on all around the world during my horizon, I, it's a great opportunity for me. At first, I, tr I thought that I could join this conference in person, but due to some professional reason, I'm unable to do it. So I hope to be inshallah, I will join online. 
Thank you very much, Hansen. Thank you so much. Thank you, Fatima. Um, my next person is Philip. Philip, can you introduce yourself? Sure. Good day. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Hi. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I'm glad to hear from you once again. This is not the first time I, you know, uh, having time with you. Actually, probably, my name is. You're probably sick of me. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. Mm -hmm. Actually, I, I'm Philip Nakachukwebula. I'm a Nigerian. Uh, I lecture in the Department of Social Studies at the University of Delta, Agbo. I'm also a researcher. Uh, my research interest is based on uh, climate change, how climate change has actually induced uh, land conflict and uh, and uh, clashes among herdsmen and uh, farmers in Nigeria. You agree with me that it's a major challenge in, in this part of the world, the issue of uh, land conflict resulting from uh, uh, climate change and also food insecurity. So uh, I would have been very happy to be with you in person. Uh, unfortunately, uh, due to the exchange rate and some other factors, financial factor actually, I uh, won't be able to make it in France. So I was about to inform uh, uh, Townsend so you can reschedule me for online, uh, uh, online, uh, you know. Okay, let me yeah. make it. Let me make a note while I have you here. Otherwise, I'll forget. Sure. <laughs> I'm doing it now. Okay, that's that's great. So so I'm very very grateful to you. Uh, this is my uh, but I think this should be my second opportunity. I would have been with you in person, but uh, uh, due to the situation of my country, financial challenge and all that, I uh, wouldn't be able to make it. But I, I'm very hopeful. In one of the either of your uh, conferences, you know, you have a lot of uh, you know events, your different you know type of conferences all over the world every, every time of the year. But I'm very hopeful. One of these days. I will meet you in person and uh, I will participate fully with you. Thank you so much for this opportunity once again. I really appreciate it. Yeah, bye. Thank, thank you, thank Philip. You. Um, thank Tia, you. Tianzi, Tianzi, forgive me if I mispronounce it. Is it Tianzi or Tianze? Uh, yeah, uh, it's my name, you know, originally in Chinese. So it's actually Tianzi. Oh, I yeah, didn't but have it correct definitely. At all. <laughs> I am so okay. I'm very sorry. Thank no you. No worries, yours. Actually, you did uh, much better than some other of my colleagues. You know. Oh, in... okay. <laughs> Good. Okay. Uh, uh, would you like to introduce yourself? Oh yes, thank you very much. And um, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Tianzi Pang, and I'm currently a PhD candidate at the Canadian Center for Climate Change and Adaptation at the University of Prince Edward Island, like we are the smallest province in Canada. So um, uh, like this, our Canadian Center for Climate Change and Adaptation is newly uh, opening to uh, opening to to the public and to for all the labs in 2022 is a research center under the cooperation uh, the federal government, provincial government of PEI, and also our university. So for our center and uh, our lab, uh, our research are quite multidisciplinary. Like for me, uh, based on my background and my interest, I focused on the coastal hazards and coastal uh, coastal processes, mod mo uh, modeling and monitoring, like coast erosion, flooding, and storm surges. But in our lab, we still have other researchers focusing on health and agriculture. Like we are a province uh, produced a lot of potatoes for the whole country of Canada. And also fisheries, uh, hydrology, ecology, uh, and uh, what else? But yeah, just like our conference, we are uh, also a quite a multidisciplinary uh, research institute, and yeah, and I'm very happy to to have this opportunity because I was actually uh, selected as a awardee in the second round. So I thought at the beginning I thought I cannot make this, but uh, luckily I, I got a chance. Uh, like attend this conference uh, online in the online stream. Yeah. So yeah, Perfect. that's basically everything. 
about me. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my next is, uh, it says, uh, Professor Dr. Awal Khan. Awal? Hello, everyone. Good evening from Bangladesh. Uh, my name is Awal. I'm serving as a professor of law at Independent University Bangladesh, which is one of the uh, largest private universities in Bangladesh. And I have been teaching uh, since 2005 at university level. And my uh, teaching, research, and um, other interests include uh, uh, climate change, human rights, displacement, and broader uh, uh, aspect is human rights and environmental law. I completed my PhD on that issue, climate change and human rights, uh, from the uh, Western Sydney University of Australia in 2015. And uh, I'm very happy to uh, join this uh, online platform and I expect to join physically. I applied uh, for visa, uh, waiting for visa decision. And <laughs> it's a bit complicated from Bangladesh to get visa, uh, Shenzhen visa. Nowadays it is, uh, it become a bit uh, complicated. But still, I'm hopeful uh, that I'll be able to join uh, physically. And uh, it's a great opportunity and um, uh, to meet uh, all of you. And I uh, hope to see you all uh, next month. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, my next uh, person is Judy. Judy, can you introduce yourself? Oh, maybe Hi, not. Everybody. Oh, there you are. Oh. <laughs> Just a delay. <laughs> yeah, sorry uh, about that. No worries. Hi, everybody. My name is Judy. Um, I am from Vancouver, Canada. Um, I go to Simon Fraser University. Um, I am a PhD student. Yeah, I am not a candidate. Um, hoping to be a candidate soon after I do my um exams or comprehensive exams. Um. And my research focuses in on climate change and its effect on youth, um, specifically youth mental health. Uh, I um, have already started working a bit on my thesis and, and I'm trying to understand how we can support youth during the climate crisis, um, as well as uh, like understand what factors are associated with uh, people who are feeling more um, climate concern or more uh, what some people are calling eco-anxiety, which is kind of like this heightened level of um, anxiety related to, to climate change. Uh, and I'll be joining um, virtually for, for the conference. So looking forward to connecting with folks um, online. Thanks. Thanks, Judy. Um, and Angel, Angel, you are my last rectangle here. Can you please introduce yourself? Yes, thank you. Um, it's so nice to meet you all. I was an emerging scholar in person last year. Um, and it was such a wonderful experience and conference. So I'm really delighted to be in this space again this year and meeting all of you. Um, I'll be attending this year virtually because of conflicts with another event, but I'm excited to be engaging online. Um, I am a PhD candidate at Simon Fraser University, like Judy. Um, and my work is really focused on intergenerational climate justice and the role of like eco-social approaches to climate change and health education um, and how this type of education can foster health co-benefits for youth and communities and the planet more largely. So, so delighted to be meeting you all. Thanks for holding this space, Tanza. Thank you. Um, and so with that, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to share my screen and hopefully that'll work. Uh, I don't know how, um, maybe someone can give me a thumbs up or something and say that they can see me. Perfect, thank you all. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna run through the CG Scholar platform in specifically the conference microsite. Um, with that, I will sort of highlight the role of the in-person Emerging Scholar and the online only Emerging Scholar. For some of you who have been at Emerging Scholars before, this is gonna be repetitive. For some of you who haven't, feel free to raise your hand and ask any questions at any point in time. Um, I'm here to help. I will be there in France in a couple of weeks. I will also be online. You can or email me uh, at any point. Um, yeah, I'm open to questions, so don't be shy. 
is my main point there. So the first thing I want to show you here is your name should be in the top right hand side of the page. If your name is not in the top right hand side, that means you're not logged in. And if you're not logged in, you're not going to be able to see anything. So please make sure you're logged in. If you have any issues with logging in, please let us know. We can always reset your password. There are a number of different ways uh, to get to the conference microsite. Perhaps the easiest way is by clicking this event microsite button uh, right here. That'll take you straight to the about page. Um, uh, if you do log in from cgscholar.com, it will take you to this page, which is the community page. Um, I do strongly, highly, uh, you know, for sort of forcefully encourage you all to update your profiles. Um, when you uh, your name appears in the event schedule, it will be hyperlinked to your profile page. Um, so people, other people will click on your name and be sent to that page. Um, and we like to have updated information there. If you, There are two ways that you can update this information. One is by going to your name here and going down to account settings and updating it there. Another one is if you're in this community page and you go down, you can go down to profile here. Um, and that will take you to the page where you can update all your information. Um, like I said, uh, this is how people will see more information about you rather than just your sort of name and your affiliation. Um, sorry, I'm, I'm struggling with some slow internet today and it's always when I'm in a Zoom meeting, isn't it? Um, the cable went out for you know a couple of hours earlier. Um, so then this is my page. Um, so then I can go and update all that information there. You'll see that you have um, the climate change community here, which you can go ahead and click on. And that's just sort of for regular updates regarding the conference and the journal. Um, you can go ahead and click on that community page. I'm going to jump over to this tab now just to go through the different parts of the microsite. So here we have the about page. There is a little bit of information here, including the special focus, um, the links back to the conference website, which is this one here, um, as well as links to the book imprint and the journal. Um, if you shortly we'll be uploading um, a PDF uh, microsite guide, which is basically what I'm saying now in PDF form. So Sometimes I talk too quickly. Sometimes the video recording isn't so clear. Um, so if you need more information about, you know, how to access this, updating your profile information like that, um, the microsite will be, uh, the microsite guide uh, will be available for you to download there. Now, for those of you who have a proposal, this will not say submit a proposal. If you're logged into the correct account, it will say your proposal. Now, that is your presentation page. When you click on your proposal, you'll be able to scroll to the bottom of the page and that is where you can upload your digital media. For the online only presenters, digital media is required. These presentations are asynchronous. They do not have a live Zoom component and the digital media is how you are presenting. This can be a number of different forms, right? You don't just have to upload a video of you talking. You can upload a PowerPoint presentation with a voiceover. Uh, you can upload a PDF with some images that are supplemental to your presentation. If you're doing a poster, you can upload a poster with a sort of a voiceover. Um, so there's an MP4 file. You can embed a Vimeo or a YouTube uh, video there. Um, one of the easiest ways to create a presentation uh, video if, you're, if, you, if you want to is uh, or need to is if you open a Zoom meeting with yourself, share your screen of your PowerPoint presentation and present to yourself. This is one of the simplest ways that you can up, you know, you can create one of these videos without too much, you know, technical assistance. Um, please keep in mind that when, when you upload your digital media, you will receive an email saying that your digital media has been uploaded. It will not appear until two things have happened. First of all, until we've reviewed that digital media and uh, and checked everything, you will receive an email when it's been approved. Um, if for some reason you uploaded a telephone bill, uh, we will reject it. And so you will also receive an email uh, saying we will not accept your telephone bill as your digital media. The second thing that has to happen is the discussion boards need to open. So your digital media will not be 
you can other people will not be able to view it and you will not be able to view it on your page until the discussion boards open and they will open on the 24th of April. Um, that is when the online only people can start viewing all the digital media for the conference um, and the in-person people can start viewing all the digital media for the conference. Whilst it is required uh, for the online only presenters, we strongly encourage the in-person presenters to also upload digital media for two reasons. Firstly, it a, creates a richer online experience for those who are participating online. And secondly, it means you as the moderators of those in-person sessions get an insight into that presentation before it happens uh, on site if you're interested. And I'll go into it that in, in a little minute. Um, so here is the registration page. It'll say Emerging Scholar Registration. Um, but if for some reason you need to download that or view if you've added any extras to your account, um, please, you can go ahead and do that there. So like if you have the conference dinner or, or a tour, it would also appear there. If you want to sign up for any special events, I'm just going to skip this presentations tab for just one moment. If you want to sign up for any special events, you can do that here on the special events tab. Uh, you just change the quantity over to one or two, however many uh, dinners you would like to do and go through the process of selecting and paying for that there. The presentation page. Um, so there are a number of different tabs on the presentation page. Um, the first one is following. So I want to make a note that assuming that you're logged in, your following page, your following tab on that presentation page will be unique to you. So for example, um, I might choose five presentations to follow that are, com are completely, and then Philip might choose a completely different two presentations to follow. Um, and so in my profile, I'll be able to see those five uh, there. Um, so this is really your space to curate, uh, your space to you know identify streams or um, panels or even individual presentations that you're interested in that can go there. And I'll show you how that works in just one minute. Um, featured presentations. These are you, our amazing emerging scholars. So we like to, um, feature your presentations here so that everyone can easily access them. I'm going to use uh, Judy as an example. You are an online asynchronous presentation. So we can go ahead and click on that here and it will take me to where you are in the program. Um, it means that from there, I can click on the title of your presentation. I can view your digital media. I can follow that presentation. So there you are there. I'll go ahead and follow you um, and I can click on that there. Um, see the other presentations that are in your um, themed panel there. Um, and I'm going to request your digital media, Judy, um, and click on that request button. Now, you, what should happen now is that you should receive an email saying that I've, someone has requested to see your digital media. And when you upload it, I, as the requester, will receive an email uh, saying that it's been uploaded. So Hopefully everyone's well informed there. I've also followed that. So now what we can do is click back to this presentations page. I'm gonna close these other tabs in the hope that things move a little, little faster here. And there we, there we have it. So we can see Judy's presentation on my following tab now. Now I'm gonna keep using you as an example, Judy, I apologize. Um, and I'm gonna click on the t your name there. And like I said before, when you upload, when you update your profile page, um, this is what, and you have, great, <laughs> thank goodness. Um, so, and this is what you will see. So then what I can do is I can add you as a peer um, and we can connect that way. Uh, so that, that's why it's useful. I can read a little bit more about you here. I can look at your education. His, if you have any work history and things that you wanna upload, you can do that uh, too. By theme, let's say for example, I'm not interested in any of the other themes, uh, just the special focus this year. So I only wanna focus on presentations that are related to the special focus. Uh, what I can do is I can scroll down here, they're listed in uh, order of, pres of theme. So um, of course I picked the one that's probably gonna be at the bottom here and there we go. Um, so then we can see uh, the presentations that are linked to that special focus. By type, if for example, I'm only interested in poster presentations, I can scroll down if there's a lot of theme paper presentations for this one, I already had a look. Um, so there's the poster sessions. So as you can see, each one of these, you can see if it's an in-person presentation, 
Uh, it'll say room to the date and the time. If it's an online only presentation, you'll see it says online asynchronous. By clicking any of these, it will take you to where it is listed in the event schedule. Uh, if you wanna go ahead and follow it from there or um, have a look at the digital media and comment in the discussion board. Alphabetical is alphabetical according to the title of the presentation. If for some reason you remember the title and nothing else about it, uh, you can go ahead and search for that there. And we do actually have this search function. So if you remember someone's name, uh, let's just say David, I may have made that up. We don't have a David, let's just say Tamsin. <laughs> uh, but I'm not presenting, so that's not gonna work. Let's use someone who actually is real. So then here's Fatima. Um, and then I can go ahead and search and that shows me everything about her there. I'm gonna jump over to the schedule now just to show you a little bit more about how we can engage in the conference. So the discussion boards will open on the 24th of April. Um, and then you can see these tabs here will show us the different things that are happening on this, these pages. Um, we start off with the conference tour. Um, if you wanna sign up for the conference tour, you can do that at, uh, through the special events tab. Um, we have the online welcome and training session. You'll see here that we, it says live, online only. Um, uh, you can go ahead and click on the title of that presentation um, and you can join via Zoom. Um, we do have a pre-conference registration um, at 5 p.m. Um, on the 24th of April. So if you are there in person, uh, please feel free to join us for that. We also have a conference opening and stakeholder discussion on that evening, um, as well as a reception. So please join, join for that. Um, this, uh, you'll see here that this session does not have live online only. This will be recorded and uploaded. Um, the same with the uh, plenary sessions. Um, these will be recorded and uploaded. Each one of the plenary speakers has a CG Scholar account. They're tagged to the session. So when, if someone, if you have a question about that, the video, you can join the discussion board when it opens um, and ask them a question there. Um, now for our emerging scholars, we do, I have not yet assigned you to these uh, talking circles. If you take a look, please send me an email if you have a preference of which one you would like to moderate. The talking circles are kind of a unique um, format uh, for our for our conferences. They're informal, we, you know, and literal. We form the chairs in the room into a circle. Um, there's a list of questions in each one of these. Um, and I will hand them to you on a piece of paper too. And you pick the room based on the theme that you're interested in. So for example, if you're interested in the special focus, you would go to room one. Um, and in that room, once we form a circle and everyone's in there, we sort of say, who are you? What are you doing here? Why are you in this room? Um, and there's a series of questions. We do this at the start of the conference so everyone can uh, meet each other, um, and sort of assist and, and you as the moderators of these sessions will sort of assist in the discussion. You'll find that people are not shy um, and are willing to talk. So these prompt questions, whilst they help, sometimes it goes off in a different direction um, and that's fine too. But really just the main thing is that people are introducing themselves and meeting each other. Um, so then we get into these other sessions. Um, uh, you can see that you're assigned as moderators in these. You can also see that uh, this is from 12, uh, 1140 to 12.55 in room one. Um, and Philip is the moderator here. Um, the, se the sessions go for 20 minutes each. And you'll see actually that if they go for 20 minutes each, that this, this session would then finish at 12.40, but it doesn't, it finishes at 12.55. So why? What we do here is each presenter presents for 20 minutes. I will give you as an emerging scholar a piece of paper that says five minutes you know, end of session. So it's nice to say to maybe Richard at the start, say, hey, Richard, I'll be showing you this five minutes and end of session sign at 15 and 20 minutes, the same. So it's 20 minutes, 20 minutes, 20 minutes, no questions in between, 15 minutes of questions at the end. Why do we do this? It's for discussion uh, and it's for to create a discussion between the sessions. Um, there's a reason why we've themed these presentations presentations together and we really want to draw that out so as the emerging scholar what you can do is you can say uh we've had the three presentations would the the present would the presenters like to join at the front of the room 
And there is a there's a few ways that you can you can firstly ask the audience for questions, or if you yourself would happy to kick things off, you can say, um, you know, I can see a connection between Claudia's presentation and Richard's presentation in this way. Um, if you're not sure about, if everyone's super shy, uh, you can ask them about the special focus and how their presentation links to that. What you can do as well is click on the title of the the title of the panel um, and read through their abstracts beforehand. Um, you can also see that Claudia here and Pedro have uploaded digital media already. So when that opens on the 24th, you can view that in advance um, and have a sort of a little bit idea of more of an idea of um, what to ask there. And the same goes for the online only emerging scholars. We can see here that Angel is assigned as a moderator to this session response and recovery. I can go ahead and click on the title of that um, panel here. We can see who has, has not uploaded digital media and who has. And so when those discussion boards open um, on the 24th, Angel as the moderator will be responsible for viewing the digital media associated with each presentation, as well as requesting digital media if it has not already been uploaded. Now, we're still a few weeks away from the conference, so it's not likely that um, many people, you know, it, the deadline is one week prior to the conference, so not everyone will have uploaded yet. Um, but then what you can do is the same as the in-person delegates, get the, you know, sort of figuratively, uh, get the uh, uh, emerging scholars to the front of the room and ask them questions related to their presentations uh, and how they connect to each other. Um, so it would be more than just writing. In the, and you, as you can see, the discussion board is for the panel. It's not for the individual presentations, the same way it is in the in-person presentations. If you're an online only emerging scholar, um, so your role will be to ask questions uh, in that in that discussion board. And it would be sort of a sort of, um, you wouldn't just say great presentation, you know, you would, so, you know, it'd be sort of a critical question asking about the content of their presentation, how it might link to another one in the panel. Um, I would strongly recommend that you do that within the sort of first 24 hours of the conference. That way it gives you enough time to respond if, to people who might respond to you um, without feeling too rushed. Um, I'm trying to think, so if, you know, in the first, at least view the digital media of the session that you're assigned to in the first 24 hours and ask, ask a first set of questions. You don't have to be sitting in the discussion board the whole time. Once you ask a question, if someone responds to you, you'll receive an email saying someone has responded, click this link. Um, so I feel like I went through that a little bit quickly. Um, and perhaps what I might do now is sort of open it up for anyone who has any questions. Uh, for our in-person emerging scholars, um, please, if you are there the evening before, um, please, two things actually in-person emerging scholars, uh, please come to the pre-conference registration the evening before, which is at 5 p.m. and it's there in the program. The second thing is if you wouldn't mind uh, emailing me your phone numbers because what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a WhatsApp group so that we can easily contact each other during the conference if we have any problems. Help, you know, the projector in room one isn't working or someone needs an adapter in room two. Um, often people will come to you with sort of questions like this or sort of practical questions, you know, where's the bathroom or something like that. Um, and so it's helpful if we can sort of help each other that way. Um, by creating a what, quick WhatsApp group so you don't have to keep running to the registration desk. Uh, so if you email me your phone numbers um, and make sure to attend that pre-conference registration. I wonder if anyone else has any questions. Don't be shy. No. Okay, so what I'm going to do is um, I'm gonna send this video around to all the emerging scholars. If for some reason, uh, uh, sorry, there's something in the chat. Yeah, just email me your phone number so that we can uh, make sure that we're all on, so that we can create that WhatsApp group. Um, I'll send this video around to everyone uh, so you can watch it again. I know I talked quickly and so 
Um, maybe if you have a question that you have, please feel free to contact me anytime. Um, and with that, what I might do is say goodbye and have a nice day. Or evening or morning. Or evening. Thank <laughs> or you. Guys. Wherever Thank you, you are. <laughs> I'm and I'll see a few of you in person in the next okay. couple of weeks. Sure. Sure. Okay. Bye, everyone. Bye.